Chapter 5 That evening, Tom and Benny sat on the front steps and watched the sun set over the mountains. Benny was depressed. He looked at the sunset as if it was a window into the future, and all he saw was forced closeness with Tom and the problems that went with it. He also didn't understand Tom. He knew Tom had run away, and yet he now made his living killing Zoms. Tom never talked about it at home. He never bragged about his kills, didn't hang out with the other bounty hunters, didn't do anything to show how tough he was. On one hand, Zoms were not supposed to be hard to kill in a one-on-one situation, not against a smart and well-armed person. On the other hand, there was no room for mistakes with them. They were always hungry, always dangerous. No matter how hard he tried to work it out in his head, Benny could not see Tom as the kind of person who could or would hunt the living dead. It was like a henhouse chicken hunting foxes. Over the last couple of years, Benny had almost asked Tom about this, but each time he left his questions unspoken. Maybe the answers would somehow show more of Tom's weakness. Maybe Tom was lying and really doing something else. Benny had worked out a number of bizarre and unlikely scenarios to try and explain chicken shit Tom as a zombie killer. None of them held water. Now... But the reality of what they were going to do tomorrow morning, as clear and real as the setting sun, Benny finally put the question out there. Why do you do this stuff? Tom cut a quick look at him, but he continued to sip his coffee and was a long time answering. Tell me, kiddo, what is it you think I do? Duh, you kill Zoms. Really? That's what you say, Benny said then grudgingly added, That's what everyone says. Tom Amora, the great zombie killer. Tom nodded, as if Benny had said something interesting. So far as you see it, that's all I do? I just walk up to any zombie I see and pow? Uh, yeah. Uh, no. Tom shook his head. How can you live in this house and not know what I do? what my job involves. What's it matter? Everybody I know has a brother, sister, father, mother, or haggy old grandmother who's killed Zoms. What's the big? He wanted to say that he thought Tom probably used a high-powered rifle with a scope and killed them from a safe distance, not like Charlie and Hammer, who had the stones to do it mano a mano. Killing the living dead is a part of what I do, Benny, but do you know why I do it? And for whom? For fun? Benny suggested, hoping Tom would be at least that cool. Try again. Okay. Then for money. And for whoever's going to pay you. Are you pretending to be a dope or do you really not understand? What? You think I don't know you're a bounty hunter? Everybody knows that. Zach Mathias' Uncle Charlie is one too. I heard him tell stories about going deep into the ruin to hunt Psalms. Tom paused with his coffee cup halfway to his lips. Charlie? You know Charlie Pink Eye? He gets mad if people call him that. Charlie Pink Eye shouldn't be around people. Why not? demanded Benny. He tells the best stories. He's funny. He's a killer. So are you. Tom's smile was gone. God, I'm an idiot. I have to be the worst brother in the history of the world if I let you think I'm the same as Charlie Pink Eye. Well, you're not exactly like Charlie. Oh, that's something then. Charlie's the man. Charlie's the man, echoed Tom. He sat back and rubbed his eyes. Good God. What could you possibly find interesting about a thug like Charlie? Because he tells it like it is. Benny said. I mean, it's kind of weird that we're surrounded by like a zillion zombs. We learn about first night and zombies in school, but they just talk around it for the most part. They don't tell us about it. It's crazy. We have all those salvage textbooks from before first night that tell us about the world. Politics and cars and all that. 
But you know what we have for first night? A pamphlet. Does that make any sense? I can tell you about the make and model car that ever rolled out of Detroit. But I can't tell you about how Detroit fell during first night. I know about cell phones and computers and all that before stuff. But I don't know anything about what's on the other side of the fence. Except what I learned from Charlie. Twice a month we practice zombie killing in gym class by hitting straw targets with sticks. And we do some of that kind of crap in the scouts. But nobody, I mean nobody, except Charlie and the Hammer ever really talks about zombs. Our teachers must think we're all learning about zombies from our folks, but none of my friends have heard squat at home. You're even worse because killing zombs is your job and you never talk about it. Never. Yeah, you help me with math and history and all that stuff, but when it comes to zombs, I learn more off the back of zombie cards than I ever do from you. Everyone over 20 years old in this stupid town acts like we're living on Mars. I mean, how many people even go to the red zone, let alone all the way to the fence? Even the fence guards don't talk about zombs. They talk about softball and what they had for dinner last night, but they all pretend the zombs aren't even there. People do go to the red zone, Benny. They go there to post erosion portraits for the bounty hunters. Oh, yeah? Well, I know for a fact that most people pay kids to post the portraits for them. How do I know? Because I put up about a hundred of them. You? Zombie cards don't buy themselves, Tom. And when people ask kids to put the pictures up, they don't even say what they are. I mean, we're standing there, both looking at an erosion portrait, and no one ever mentions the word zom. Most people just say, Hey kid, want to hang this for me? They never say where. They know that we know, but they can't actually come out and say it. It's freaking weird, man. People are scared, Benny. They're in denial. You're only 15, so you and your friends don't really understand what it was like during first night. No joke, Mr. Wizard. That's my whole point. We want to know. Tom pursed his lips. I guess people probably want to shelter you from it. Benny wanted to throw something at Tom. He eyed a heavy book. That might wake him up. How the heck can anyone shelter us? We live behind fences, surrounded by the rot and ruin. Maybe you've heard of it? Big place used to be called America, filled with zombs. It's not fair that people don't tell us the truth. Benny. I... It's our world, too, Benny snapped. His words hit Tom like a slap. Then, into the silence, Benny dropped another bomb. Don't get on my case for listening to Charlie if he's the only one who thinks we ought to know truth. Tom stared at him for a long time as different emotions flowed like water over his face. Finally, he threw the last of his coffee into the bushes beside the porch and stood up. Tell you what, Benny. Tomorrow we're going to start early and head out into the rot and ruin. We'll go deep, like Charlie does. I want you to see firsthand what he does and what I do, and then you can make your own decisions. Decisions about what? About a lot of things, kiddo. And with that, Tom went inside and to bed.